Hi, welcome to our Bonka Rig. Hi guys, welcome to another Bonka Rig session and today we have Trophy Knives. We have here. My name is Vinesh and I sing for the band. Hi Vinesh. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Alright, so... Nice to meet you formally. <laughs> I've seen yes. your videos. Oh, okay. Alright, thanks. You are, you guys are launching a new album, so mm -hmm. congratulations on that. Thank you so All much. Alright, so uh, can you tell us a little bit about your album? Like what's the, album? the story and all okay, that? Okay, so uh, we created this entire album uh, during the lockdown. Mm -hmm. But in 2019, we released a full length already. Okay. So in 2020, it felt too soon to release a new album. Okay. So what we did was uh, we released the first half of this new album uh, in 2020. So we released like five five tracks first as a preview. Okay. And then over the past six months, we completed the rest of the tracks. And here we are. So we have like, this is our second full length call okay. the other way. <laughs> Today, we just want you guys to like share your gears that you are playing on stage. Okay. Start with what's in front of us right now. Yeah, basically for like my portion of, of like this segment, okay. it probably should only take 10 seconds <laughs> because sure. yeah, I uh, you straight up use it. SM58. I spray painted it. Traditionally, we, we only wear all black for all of our like uh, videos and live performances. But mm -hmm. um, the very last video that we shot, we decided to go all white for a change. Okay, right. And uh, because of that, I got like a white ground base mic stand and I spray painted <laughs> uh, this SM58. Okay, and the stand as well. Yeah, uh, the, this one I actually bought it uh, at Music List, so it okay. came. It came White. <laughs> okay, white. Okay, oh, came white. So yeah. what is this? Yeah. Uh, gitu. Yeah. Yeah, gitu. Okay. All right. <laughs> Pretty much that's it. <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you for having for me. Sharing. <laughs> well, let's meet up with the drummer for Trophy Knives. Right. So now we are with Ryan, the drummer for Trophy Knives. So thank you so much for uh, sitting <laughs> with us at the backstage here. Thanks for sitting with me. Can you tell us a little bit about your gears that you use on on stage? Sure. Here? Um. So. A brief overview for the drums. Um, I've always liked Pearl drums simply because I've never played a bad sounding Pearl kit uh, and I can't say the same about other brands that I've played. Maybe it's just my luck. Mm -hmm. um, the kit that I'm using is a wood fiberglass kit. This kit in particular, the reason I have it is because it means something special to me. Um, one of my very first drum teachers was Paul of Paul's Place and at Paul's Place he had a wood fiberglass kit. Okay. And it's not like, you know, I played Paul's Place a million times. I've never actually played there. It's just like, I saw it when it became available when Pearl released it. I thought it'd be pretty cool to have. Okay. And it's a, it's a reissue of an old Pearl fiberglass kit anyways. I found, unfortunately, that with certain drum finishes, mm -hmm. they don't do so well in our tropical climate. So okay, the finish yeah. that was originally on the kit was a, I think it was called Platinum Mist or something, and it was like this yellowy gold thing. Mm -hmm. It started to develop like, I don't know if you would call it a patina, but it looked like a haze on top of the finish. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. I, for some reason, the finish was like wearing off or something. Nah, that's, yeah. So I ordered like a car wrap of AliExpress and I just wrapped it pink. And you wrapped it yourself? Yeah, I wrapped it myself. It All was, right. Quite therapeutic because taking stuff apart and putting stuff to bed, to back together, I kind of like doing that. All right. Yeah. So why do you choose like pink color? Uh, it's a nice color. I like pink. Like yeah, it doesn't have to go with anything else that I wear answer. or anything else on stage. It's it's a cool color. All right. Okay. <laughs> You're using snare, a mm -hmm. bass drum, and then one tom and one fourth tom, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So like your snare, what snare are you using? I, is it the same from Pearl? Or? So no, it's not a kit snare. What I did was, every time I see a Pearl free floater on sale, okay. I buy it because um, I buy it for the cage. So the free floating mechanism enables you to take out the shell, swap the shell because all the hardware is independent of the shell. It's not on the shell, mm -hmm. right? So by getting a free floater cage, what I'm able to do is I can buy the shell without any drilled holes. I can buy a shell for like a wholesale price. Mm -hmm. Pop it in, pop the heads on and voila, you've got a new snare. All right. Yeah, so okay. the snare that I'm using now is, the shell that I'm using is from a company called Offbeat Drum Co. Can't remember where they're based out of in the States, but they do a, if I'm not mistaken, it's a cop a bronze snare. It's one of those okay. um, and they they stain it with a patina on purpose. I can probably say that no one else has a design like mine. Symbols. What symbols are you using? I use a whole bunch of different symbols. I'm using 14 inch Saluda hat. So Saluda is a brand in the States mm -hmm. um, that I got to know and what they do is they take broken symbols from different companies. Okay. They melt them down and they make their own symbols. Oh. Based on, let's say, I think the symbols that I have are based off Sabian AAs and 
zildjian probably A's, I A's, think. A's, okay, right. Yeah. So they melt it down and they make a whole new symbol based on a hybrid of whatever broken <laughs> symbols they have. So 14 Saluda hats. Um, I'm using a 16 and a 17 Arborea. I can't remember Arborea, the... Arborea, okay. I can't remember right. the series. I yeah. forgot it. Uh, the 16 and 17. Um, I've got a 21 Armand Ride, okay. which has been with me for possibly 15... No, not 15 years. About... 10 years, 10 years plus. Um, it's cracked multiple times, mm -hmm. but I'm too sayang to like stop using it. <laughs> okay. So I just like, I got someone to cut out the crack. I'm still oh, using okay, that. Oh, okay, right. Um, and I'm also using a... But does it uh, change the sound? I can't tell the difference. Okay, and I don't right. think anyone in the audience can. Okay, And right, if right. anyone tells you otherwise, they're lying. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, of course, it depends on the size of the cutout, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because what you're doing by cutting out the symbol is your... Uh, what do you call it? You're killing the vibration that travels through that section. If your symbol is 21 inches and you cut out 1 cm, it's a negligible difference. No mm. one's gonna hear it. If you cut out 3 inches, mm -hmm. then we've got an issue. You know, okay. It's gonna change the sound of the symbol. Right. Not that it sounds any worse or any better. It's just different. So another symbol is... The China. So China, the China okay. I'm using an 18 inch Sabian AAX, I think. Okay, right. Yeah. And that's one of my favorite symbols because it's super aggressive. Yeah, I, I, I heard that uh, from <laughs> in front when you guys are uh, sound checking. Okay, so uh, the drums that you are using. Mm -hmm. So I've played almost all the different uh, drumstick brands and I've kind of found what I like in Minel drumsticks. Okay. So Minel drumsticks are fairly new. Uh, Minel stick and brush, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I like their 5As. I mean, they're just simple 5As, no, mm -hmm. no fancy 5A extended tip extended whatever extra weight in front nothing they're just standard five A's. okay and i like that I dig and that. it's made uh what, what kind of wood it's hickory i think hickory yeah. okay just right. hickory. last one uh the mics that you are using for this show i'm using uh i think they're all bears on the snare snare first tom floor tom and there's a bear boundary microphone inside the kick drum okay and a sennheiser i can't remember 602 e602 i think i might be horribly messing yeah, this up I'm kind of but yeah it's too. a it's a kick drum microphone but it looks like that and it's go it goes in front of the kick drum. We're going to Photoshop, <laughs> Photoshop it like when he's holding. Okay. Yeah. So that one is towards the outside um, of the hole, right? I think Nelly, our brilliant sound guy, I think he put it just outside the hole. I don't know if he stuck it inside. Yeah. I yeah. leave I leave all the sound stuff to him. Okay. Right, so it makes right, the right. sound good. All right. So uh, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, thank you we'll for show me. you the pictures of what his rig was. Yeah. Next, we're going to meet with Sunny, the guitarist for Trophy Knives. Alright, so now we are with the guitarist for Trophy Knives, Mr. Sunny. Yes. Alright, so nice Hello. to meet you. Okay. He's going to show us his trick. So mm. we're going to start with these two guitars over here. So let's start with okay. Gibson SG. Yeah. Okay, sure, sure. The main guitar now, it's my... Um, this is a Gibson SG. Uh, this is a special, it's a special. Okay. This one I picked up in Chicago Music Exchange back in 2000. 14. And I was with my other band, we were doing another tour. It's mahogany and you can see it's got a lot of scratches because Gibson is not strong enough. So, <laughs> okay. so this one I've been using a couple years. It's a really nice guitar. I started, it had, it came with P90s, the okay. normal, the single coil P90s. Uh, but I changed them to uh, the JB... Maybe you can show a little bit. Uh, the, yeah. yeah, the JB Seymour Dunker. So I, I still left one for the, for the neck. Okay. Uh, I recently changed the back a change to something more heavy. These are the Marzio Titans. The tuners for Gibsons are also quite weak, so I changed them to uh, these locking tuners here. These are ratio ratio band. I'm not sure, but you can get them at Music Bliss as well and get so your guitar both, set up. So both are installed. This one and the tuner was installed in Music Bliss. Yes. All right. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm very lucky. I just I never called in advance. I just went there and said, Hey, do you have these? And okay. Okay. And everything worked out. And that's basically it. It's very high gain, high gain pickup. Because mm -hmm. I'm the I'm we're only one guitarist in the band, so I play most of the rhythm and the bass really needs to like gel. Okay, right. Yeah. Do you exactly know like from which year this guitar was from? Okay, so this is the re it's a ratio SG SG special year. I bought 2014, but it was made recently 2010. Okay. So it was it was you know when Gibson was doing those like. 80s re reissue. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, so yes, that's yes, what yes, that's yeah. what kind of has like the jack black kind of color, the uh, normal SG mahogany red. Right? And this is like the old the old SGs. They turned into this color because the wood and the paint was quite bad quality. But <laughs> okay. this one already has a red veneer, so, so it looks it looks old, but it's not that old. Yeah, but it looks mm. kind of like vintagey as well. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. I mean, it has a lot of scratches to show it, lah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but do, do you like particularly choose this model, the SG model, over other Gibson 
Oh, like Les okay. Paul. Okay. Prior to this, I've been using a Les Paul, like from L not Les Paul, uh, uh, the Eclipse, LTD. Right? Eclipse, right? Yeah, Eclipse. Okay. EC1000. The EC1000, I don't have it with me today. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, we will show you the picture now. So the EC1000 is totally different guitar than this. It's heavier, it's 24 frets, mm -hmm. it's much skinnier neck, smaller okay. neck. That one already comes with the, the tuners. That one originally came with a 81, 85, mm -hmm. but I changed them to bare knuckle painkillers. Oh, okay, right. So it's right. like, I changed that back in 2013 because like very gen, gen was big, big back then. Yes, yes, yeah. So the curve for the EQ I mean, is it's still, it's still, it's still big. It's still big now. <laughs> it's not as big like in the wave 2012 and 13. So yeah, like, yeah, so yeah. like the, the curve for the EQ is just very like sharp and it goes down like that. So like uh -huh. for single note stuff, it's really good, but for our new sound, for Trophy Nice new sound, mm -hmm. it just doesn't come in. Like it doesn't doesn't really like gel, uh, gel doesn't out gel, the sound. Okay, yeah. Right. So right now we have like a different sound for the bass. The drums are playing more intricate things. Okay. So this guitar does a better job at that. All right. Yeah, but okay. the clips very metal. Okay, so between the two for the band, yeah, which one would you say like the main guitar? Because I've seen your yeah. music video, yeah. like you're rocking out your the clips. LTD clips, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. The LTD, the LTD has been the main guitar for the past three years, okay. just because it's just it's more road safe to tour. Something about the Korean made uh, LTD C1000 just they're stronger. Mm -hmm. Like this guitar is amazing. It sounds great, but I cannot bring it overseas because it has a possibility to bend the neck. Mm. When you're in the flight, and it smells a bit. Uh, I don't know why. Uh. <laughs> Don't need this guitar. All right. So last one. Uh, what strings are you using? Okay, for these, I'm just using the normal 42 to nine slinkies. Yeah, Ernie right. Ball slinkies. Uh, we we drop tune, but the smaller, skinnier strings they actually have a more more whip to it. Uh. All right. So let's start with your acoustic guitar. Okay. It's a Taylor. What model is this? Okay, information on this guitar. I don't have that much. This was a gift from my girlfriend. But this should be the Academy 12... 12E. There you go. Academy 12E. So these are the tailors that are a bit more affordable <laughs> price for, for, the, for the nicer word. But it sounds nice when I hear backstage yeah. uh, from in front just now from your uh, yeah, yeah. It sounds, sound check. Yeah. It sounds great because they, they come with like the built-in preamp here. These are these are not Fishman's. Okay. Right. Yeah, they should be Taylor's own one, but okay. they do the job as a tuner, little jack here. And the output is re real good because it doesn't have to be a really good preamp because the, the resonance from the inside is already... It's really bright inside there. It's one construction, I'm not too sure. But you could feel like they could they cut the cost in some places here because it's much it's much lighter and very very neck heavy. Okay. But the resonance when you're playing and recording, it's a really good affordable guitar if you want this. Right. Yeah. So you you use this guitar as well for the recording? Yeah, our acoustic song. Okay. For act uh, act one, this is the recording the the guitar I used to record. I did like four or five layers, just straight line, and it wasn't even mic'd up, and like it was good enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So from the from the things I see here, like yeah. there's a cut there's a cut out here, and yeah. then I guess this is mahogany back and sides. I'm gonna guess that too. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it. Yeah. So okay. my my girlfriend bought this one because I told her I I always wanted like a tailor. Ah, but okay. but she, I didn't know how she knew about this thing or whatever. But I bet because it looks nice. It, does, it looks really nice though. Yeah, it does yeah. look nice. I, I only noticed once I once I played it a while. It had like some like like roasty kind of wood there. Um, ah, I don't okay. know if you see it there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so that's it about your guitars. Now let's go mm -hmm. to his pedals. Okay. Sure. It's a real simple rig. There's nothing much you can see. There's only one unit. That's mm -hmm. a Line 6 Pod Go. And I got this at Music Bliss like two years ago. It's just much easier. I used to use a big long pedal board with different sounds and I couldn't get like matching tones. You have to use different amps every show. So this one, uh, I don't have it on right now, but I just use like four main settings. Distortion channel, my clean, my distortion leads, and a, a phase, a phase just to play around. Mm -hmm. So the Podgo has like some really cool sounds to, to record with. So I'm basically using just the the a plexi amp for the clean, a Marshall. They, they don't have the exact name, but it's like JCM eight hundred uh, 
wanna be kind of sound, but okay. it works really well. And I turn the cabin off here, right. and I connect to the return for the the, the orange cabs in front. Yeah. Okay, yeah. right. And does this also connects to the front of house? For this one, no. So there's one limitation from the Podgo. Mm -hmm. You can only do use one cabinet at a time. For me to go straight to the front house and leave the cabinet on here, I I can't get that same sound on stage. I mean, without if I didn't have any monitors. So there's something. Uh, we're a punk band, so we just like the sound a bit messy. Yeah. So yeah. that's straight into the amp, and then right. you mic it up. Okay, right. Yeah. yeah. I just want to ask, like, mm. out of all multi effects pedals, right, yeah. in the market, but yeah. why do you choose this one? Oh, it was in stock. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I mean, to, to be to be to be honest, uh, we had a lot of plans for touring in 2020, but then pandemic happened. I needed a smaller rig at that time. Uh, Music Place was bringing the FM3, but there was like a big waiting waiting line for that. Mm -hmm. So I got this instead. It was really affordable, and it has a pedal here, and then mm -hmm. it's. It's handy having this part. Yeah. Play around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you use that as wah or? Like yeah. Music? So I use for wah uh, to kill off the volume for some of the some of the songs. Yeah. And do you use this as well for the recording for the new album? Yeah. There's a couple of songs I use this for solos for the leads because there's so many pedals inside this. So I set one of like for like the Digitech um, dive bomb. So. All the dive bombs, all the wires, all the phasers and stuff, all, all from the pod go. Pretty much that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, all right. Yeah. So thank you very much, Sunny, for you. your for sharing thank us you. your gear. So let's yeah. move on to the next uh, band member of Trophy Knives. We are now with the basis for Trophy Knives. I mean, sessioning for. Yeah. Today's show. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so Kevin, nice yep. to meet hey. you. What's up, man? All right. Thanks okay, so me. today we're going to you're, you're going to share to us like your gear. So we're going to start off with your bass here. Yeah. So this is uh, currently like my main bass. Okay. I used to be a big fan of like single coil ba right. basses, but with the jazz that I used to have, I, I sold it, and then now I have this. Really love the Tommy because like it's almost like a reverse body. Okay. A bit like a jazz master. This I mean, is the Ibanez Talman. Talman 100, right? Yes. Oh, okay, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This one is like straight up like very Fender S kind of. Mm, although yeah. it's an Ibanez, but um, great because he has a P and J pickup. Okay. For trophy knives, I'm mostly all the way just the P bass pickup. I feel like with this bass, I can do like all kinds of music because the jazz pickup is like really twangy, really punchy as well. Mm -hmm. Really thick, like fretboard's pretty thick. It's active, so like great for rock because. Something about active pickups that like pushes uh, yeah. overdrive because I use a lot of like overdrive and distortion mm -hmm. and when like using active pick pickup somehow it just like makes your amp growl a little bit more. Yeah, standard uh, gauge is uh, 105. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Straight up bass. And everything is basically stock, stock right? Yeah. I mean, the only re reason why I looked at this bass in the first place was like, oh, then it's like a nice color. Yeah. It's like, oh, shit, like, that's a nice. Oh, am I allowed to press? Like, um, yeah, yeah, yeah you can. <laughs> yeah, whatever goes, right? Yeah, so Surf Green, um, really liked the bass. Then picked it up, played it, uh, loved it. It's like super affordable. Mm -hmm, yeah, it's yeah. like a thousand, yeah, a thousand ringgit. ringgit, ringgit yeah, something. Yeah. So this is my main base. The other base I use, which is not here, is like a old school SG. Okay. Yeah, but this is the main, the main, main guy lah. For like any other bands that you play as well, this is your main as well lah. Yeah. So for my solo project under Koti, like I use this base as well. How long have you have this base? Because I see like there's the tape. <laughs> oh that? yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't use the tape anymore. Okay. Because um, it kept coming off, so the strap lock. Sometimes the screw is not that this comes off, it's just that the screw comes off from the body. Ah, okay, okay, right. So the tape sort of helps with that. But this base five it's five, six years. That's it about your base. Yeah. Okay, now let's move on to your massive paddle board. <laughs> As we see here. Okay, tell us your signature that you are routing. Okay. From uh, the base and then yeah. So the main stuff. I, I kind of split it into like foundational tone okay. stuff, okay. then the distortion and overdrive, right. and then modulation. The VT bass um, is the main like tone for me, okay. because uh, VT bass has this amp, uh, cap simulator in it, yeah. so it's like analog cap sim. Mm -hmm. So I usually run an orange head. Actually, I have my head, but no, it's okay. It's okay. Right. Um, I, I love the orange head. With uh, the gain and um, but which orange hit are you using? I'm using the Terra base. Terra base, yeah. okay, right? 
So I'm using the TheraBass. So I love the head sound. If I'm DIing straight out into house, mm -hmm. there's no like cap speaker sound. Yeah. So this one emulates like MPEG SVP. So okay. when you, you, you click on this switch, it turns on the caps in. Mm -hmm. And then this character sort of like uh, not makes it very like tubey. Mm -hmm. like as if you're putting it through an MPEG tube head and then like the cabinet. Mm -hmm. So like the TheraBass is like hybrid. Right. Hybrid uh, preamp tube and solid state power. Yeah, right? yeah. So this makes it very like QB, although you're running like a solid state yeah. setup. Yeah. yeah. And it retains that character. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of sound the same no matter where you go, you know? Yeah. 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 So that's for the foundational tone. Okay. Yeah. The drives are mini, just four trophy knives. Mm -hmm. It's just the turbo rack. Okay. Which goes into the line selector because with it's made for guitar, so you lose a lot of low ends with bass. Yeah, yeah. So I put it in the line selector. Okay. So the line se selector has this like secret function where if you put nothing in A mm -hmm. and you put the red in B, the okay. A becomes clean signal. Oh, so you blend it. You blend it. Okay, with the line selector. Right, yeah. I see. Yeah. So I, I, this is always on and I engage it with the line selector. Okay. So right. I, you can see like my clean is like like zero and this is yeah. so it's like hundred percent, hundred percent. So I don't lose any. Base. So if I really want, I can put like maybe eighty percent like you know dirt and then like maybe fifty percent clean. Okay. Yeah, right. if I want to. But yeah, that's that. Then I run that into my my the dark glass vintage mm -hmm. micro tubes. This is like very tubey kind of overdrive as well. It's great for like trophy knives because trophy knives has like one base yeah. and just one guitar. Yeah. So I need to fill a lot of space. So th this one has a very warm kind of overdrive tone, which okay. I really like. And in, in this one, you already have a clean blend. It's just fully 100 clean, and this blends in like the overdrive. Right. So that's nice for that. For the drive, you you choose either one, is it? Um, or is some most you... times it's this one majority of the time. Okay. When I want it really like so, if this is like my overdrive tone. This is like my distortion tone. Okay, right. But sometimes right. I use both. I see it. When I see like it, I do yeah. power chords or like and stuff like that. First it's just for messing around. Eh? Yeah, you need a battery, which is why it's light although it's no power. Yeah, so this is like a old school like Russian mom yeah, that I use sometimes. Okay. So that all goes the preamp, the distortions goes into the noise suppressor send return. Okay. Right. So that my modulation is not affected by the noise suppressor. So it will go through the kind of the effects loop like that. Yes, yeah, so it drives only yeah. in the effects loop. So it's like from my clean tone in the first, I go into my octave. Mm -hmm. Then my noise suppressor which has all my drives in it. Then I go straight to my my black fountain. Which you shared to me that you got this from? Yeah, I got this from Dave. From Dave, so thanks. thank you for the pedal. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a delay pedal, right? Yeah. And what about this one? What is this? so I use this for? I mean, this is like a multi effects basically. Yeah. M Sims, you have all the effects in there. I use one of the tones. I use a fretless bass. So I turn basically turn my bass into a fretless bass, oh, okay. and then I put a acoustic bass sim. Okay. So my bass turns into an acoustic bass okay. for one of the songs on Trophy Noise because it's acoustic. Yeah. So I don't have to change. I mean, it doesn't sound exactly like acoustic bass, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's it sounds almost it, like it, an acoustic bass. It emulates the sound. Yeah. yeah. So it, it makes the string sound like a bit more like flat wound ish kind of yeah, tone. Right. So I use that for that. I have some reverbs that are in there because I have no I have no reverb pedal. Okay. So I have some plain reverb in there and a little bit of extra chorus in there. That's for that. And then then there's the chorus which I kick on if I'm playing a solo. That's that's the pedal board. Eh? That's it. So thank you very much for sharing. Yeah, you're welcome. That is trophy nice for you. All right. So thank you very much, Kevin, for sharing us your gears. You're welcome. All right. So that's it, folks. That's trophy nice for you. Okay. So we are definitely checking out another band. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And see you guys on another. Bongkarik. Bye. Bye. <laughs> 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 But the music is damn bad, right? Ah, it's the